Hi, so in this video, I will talk about probiotics when you do a protocol for Candida or SIBO. What types of uh, probiotics should you take? When should you take them, etc.? So I will answer these questions in this video. So um, should you, I, I will answer the first question. Should you separate the antimicrobials, antifungals from the probiotics in your protocol if you have SIBO and Candida or Candida, if you do a protocol for these things. So my answer to that question is usually yes. Uh, for most people, it's better to first take the antimicrobials or antifungals for several weeks and then later take probiotics. Why? It's because the first reason is because um, when you do a protocol like that, usually you have lots of different supplements to take. So you don't want to take too many supplements at once. So it will be much easier for you if you separate the antifungals from the probiotic uh, phase. Okay, so first you take anti, uh, only the antifungals or the antimicrobials for several weeks, and then later you take the probiotics. Uh, if you do that, you won't have to take so many things at once. This is the first reason. The second reason is uh, that some strong antifungals or antimicrobials, even if they are natural, can inhibit the development of some probiotics. So here I just want to emphasize that um, even if some natural antimicrobials can inhibit some probiotics, it has nothing to do uh, with chemical antibiotics. I just want to emphasize that here because I see many people who think that if they take for example, oregano oil, uh, it will be as bad for the microbiome as taking chemical antibiotics. It's not true. It's not the case, not at all. So yes, uh, oregano essential oil can inhibit the development of some good bacteria, uh, but most good bacteria will survive and some strains will actually thrive in an environment uh, where there is oregano oil. I won't detail this point here too much in this video because I wrote an article about that. Uh, it's on my blog, on my website. <clears throat> I will put uh, the link in the um, description box under this video and also in the comments if you want to go read my article. In that article, I um, show different studies uh, that uh, explain that some essential oils uh, will inhibit some strains of probiotics but will also um, make other strains of probiotics thrive in the gut. So, um, yeah, this is something important that I wanted to say. Um, so, yes, I don't recommend taking strong antimicrobials like oregano oil together with probiotics because some probiotics can be inhibited by the oregano oil, but um, lots of other strains of probiotics won't have any problem um, developing or thriving in the presence of oregano oil, okay? But still, because some probiotics can be inhibited by oregano oil, it's better to not take probiotics together with oregano oil. Oregano oil is one example, but there are other natural antimicrobials that can also uh, inhibit some strains of probiotics, uh, like um, grapefruit seed extracts. So it, it depends on the brand because here, for example, in Europe, there are many bad uh, brands of grapefruit uh, seed extract that are not good. To, they, they, they don't do nothing. <laughs> but uh, in America, uh, in the US, there are some brands that are very efficient. And yes, these um, brands of uh, grapefruit seed extracts, you should not take them together with probiotics. The, the third reason why I don't recommend to take probiotics together with natural antimicrobials or antifungals is because uh, logically what you want to do first is to make some space in your gut. If you have an overgrowth of candida or an overgrowth of any fungi or any bacteria in your gut, you first want to clean up the space, uh, to make space before introducing good bacteria. Okay. Uh, and the last reason that goes together with the previous one that I just said, the last reason is because uh, usually people who have SIBO, they cannot tolerate probiotics right away. So that's another reason why I don't recommend taking probiotics together with antimicrobials, antifungals. It's because people with SIBO, as I just said, they usually have too much bacteria in their gut. So if they take probiotics 
from day one of the protocol, they will have more issues generally. And they will have more gas, more pain, uh, more bloating. So especially for people with SIBO, it's better to wait several weeks before starting uh, the probiotics. It can also happen with people with uh, candida. Uh, some people with candida won't tolerate probiotics right away, but usually it's more a problem uh, for people with SIBO. So of course, if you feel that uh, taking probiotics from the beginning helps you, you can start taking the probiotics from the beginning, okay? My number one rule to follow in any case is listen to your body, okay? So um, I gave you my opinion why you should separate probiotics from antifungals, antimicrobials, but again, um, you need to listen to your body first and, and before anybody else, okay? So if you feel that taking probiotics from the beginning of your protocol helps you, if it feels good and if it helps you with some symptoms, then start taking probiotics from the beginning. Okay, and um, also there's a situation where I recommend to start probiotics earlier is for people who, when they start taking natural antimicrobials or antifungals, if they start having um, issues with their bowel movements after several days or several weeks of the treatment, they should then start taking probiotics, especially for people who start getting constipation, especially if it's a very bad constipation after several <clears throat> days or weeks of the antimicrobials, then uh, taking probiotics earlier can help them, even if they take uh, the antimicrobials and the probiotics together uh, I mean, at the same, during the same phase. Of course, if you take, if you need to take probiotics and um, antimicrobials in phase one, let's, let's say, you will separate the probiotics, um, you, you will take the probiotics as far away um, as possible from your antimicrobials in the day. For example, you will take the antimicrobials in the morning and at lunch, and you will take the probiotics at night. Okay, You don't take them together with the same meal. Now, what types of uh, probiotics do I recommend? I recommend that you start with the um, regular probiotics, uh, the regular strains of probiotics that are Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus. Why? It's because these strains um, have been studied for decades uh, and it's been a long time that many people doing SIBO protocols or candida protocols take these strains and usually, like most of the time, there's no issue with these strains. So these strains are the safest. So that's why I recommend to start with these strains, Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium strains. I also recommend to take as many strains as possible. Choose a probiotic that has at least uh, eight different strains, uh, but I prefer to recommend at least 10 different strains uh, in the probiotic that you will take. Why? It's because I repeat that in many of my videos, um, a healthy gut is a jungle. It's like a jungle. It's not a, a monocrop, okay? So you want as many different strains in your gut as possible. You want diversity. Diversity in your gut is key to have a healthy gut. If you have an overgrowth of one or two or three uh, strains, even if it's supposedly probiotics, so good strains, it can lead to infection. Okay, So you want as many strains as possible. And also I recommend for that to um, alternate different probiotic brands. You can take one brand for one week or two, and then you take another brand and you mix them uh, or you alternate. So yeah, uh, switch brands and take uh, different brands of different probiotics. Also, you need to test your probiotics. Um, I mean, you don't need to, but it's better if you do it. You, you need to test your probiotics in milk uh, to check if they are alive, uh, if it's a good brand of, of probiotics, or if the probiotics are dead and they are not as good as it as they claim on paper. I won't detail that here in this video. I have a video where I explain how to test your probiotic pills. I put the link up there and I put also the link in the comments under the video. So go watch that video to see how uh, you can test your probiotics. And then after several weeks of taking regular strains of probiotics, like Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, as I said, then you can introduce new strains, like different strains that are uh, the spore-based probiotics 
or uh, the Saccharomyces boulardii strain. I don't recommend to start uh, your course of robotics with these strains. I recommend to wait a few weeks uh, to first take the Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium and later to take the spore-based and um, Saccharomyces boulardii because these uh, strains can cause issues. Uh, they, they are not as studied uh, as the Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus, as I said um, in the beginning. <clears throat> and uh, some people can get issues if they start with these strains or if they only take these strains. So, of course, you will see many people saying that uh, they felt much better with spore-based probiotics or Saccharomyces boulardii from the beginning. Of course, I don't deny that. But just um, to be safe, I prefer to recommend taking them after uh, the Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium and also together in conjunction. Okay, So when you start taking spore-based probiotics or Saccharomyces boulardii, take them together with uh, regular strains of probiotics too. Okay, uh, that's my personal recommendation. And then uh, what about uh, probiotic foods? So my opinion uh, about probiotic foods is that it's usually better to wait until the end of your protocol to take them. It's better to start with probiotic pills and later um, take probiotic foods because usually probiotic foods are not well tolerated uh, at the beginning of the Candida protocol or the SIBO protocol. That's usually because many people with SIBO or Candida also have histamine intolerance. So if you have histamine intolerance, you cannot tolerate fermented foods. Therefore, if you eat fermented foods from the beginning, uh, you might have more symptoms, more issues. Okay, and another reason uh, is that many people have yeast intolerance, especially people with candida. So um, you have lots of yeast in fermented foods. So for these two reasons, it's usually better to wait several weeks um, and yeah, later take the probiotic foods. Again, if you feel that from the beginning uh, probiotic foods help you, like sauerkraut or milk kefir or even um, water kefir. If you take them now, like right before starting your protocol, or you take them now that you started the protocol and you feel fine and you feel that it actually helps you, keep taking them, of course. Okay. So as I said in the beginning, listen to your body first, huh? listen to your body before anybody else. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the exception. If you feel great, by um, eating or drinking probiotic foods or drink uh, or, or drinks uh, since the beginning of your protocol. Keep doing that. That's great. So that's it for today. I hope this video helps you. I know there's much more to say. I have more tips and more recommendations, of course, in my course on how to heal your gut. Uh, my course is on my website, thecandidaslayer.com. I put uh, the link under this video. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.